Hello and welcome to the Cavern of Terror. <laughs> The Final Destination, the fourth Final Destination movie that I am finally getting to, stars Bobby Campo, Chantel Van Santan, I think that's how you pronounce that. It's really hard to pronounce. McKelty Williamson and is directed by part two's director, David R. Ellis. You guys caught me, I'll admit it. I didn't review this movie for the longest time because I honestly didn't want to watch it, okay? I did not want to watch Final Destination 4 or The Final Destination because I always remember, I always remember this movie always just not being as good as the first three. And when I got to Final Destination 4 or The Final Destination, I was like, man, do I really have to do The Final Destination? Well, yes. You said that you were going to do the Final Destination series. That means that you're going to do all of the Final Destination films. You're going to review all of them. And as far as I know, this movie right here is part of the franchise. And I have to review it. So let's get started on the review of Final Destination for or the final destination. Why was this movie called the final destination? I know we're already starting out with a gripe, but guys, why was this movie called The Final Destination if they knew, they knew that they were going to make a Final Destination 5? Why? It's really hot in here because I have the fan off. You know that thing that you heard in my Boogeyman 3 review? That was my fan. It's really hot in here. Terrible titles for this movie aside, The Final Destination starts with Shinedown's Devour. Devour. Yeah, that song playing over stock car racing. Man, they had to pick from the worst Shinedown album, too. This is where we go into the stands, and we meet Nick, played by Bobby Campo, and him and his friends are just chilling there watching the race. But this is a Final Destination movie, my friends. This Symphony of Destruction starts very slowly. I finally did it. Guys, I finally found a way to introduce a Megadeth reference into a movie review. Sweet. Nick, as I said, our main character, starts to notice things that are a little off, things that are starting to change, and things that are leading up to our chain reaction to our Rube Goldberg, you know, disaster at the beginning of this movie. Oh, guys, this is where the carnage begins. You know, we have our traditional huge Final Destination disaster at the very beginning, and where does this one rank for me? You know, we've already done three movies in this series. And guys, this one ranks really low. And we will get into why this one ranks really low later in the review. So the opening credits for The Final Destination are admittedly actually pretty freaking cool. They're like x-ray representations of deaths that we've already seen in the franchise. You know, we got deaths from the first movie, deaths from the second movie, in deaths from the third movie. The thing that isn't cool about this is it kind of ruins deaths for people that haven't seen those movies, so that's actually a pretty big party foul, bro. Let's talk about something that's sort of become a staple on Cavern of Terror horror movie reviews are the oh, moments here in Final Destination 4 or the Final Destination or whatever you want to call this movie. Yes, they are. Love or hate the character of Hunt, my boy got it in, son. The Final Destination actually has a new method of stopping death's plan. There is a premonition at the beginning of this movie, like there has been in the previous three installments of this franchise, but it doesn't stop there. We actually get a bunch of premonitions in this movie, and it is a cool thing for the franchise. It is something new for the franchise, but unfortunately... It involves a lot of really bad CGI. I mean, guys, it really doesn't look good at all. It's very cringy and kind of takes you out of the movie. If they could have found another way to do these premonitions, I think it would have worked better. But yes, they actually did try to do something new. I respect it. It's a sad day, people. It really is a sad day. Because this is the first Tony Toddless Final Destination film. 
Now, I've done two reviews this weekend, and I've talked about Tony Todd in some form twice. Maybe the universe is telling me that I should have been reviewing the new Candyman film. You guys remember what I said in my Final Destination 3 review? They didn't really depend on Tony Todd like the first two movies did, and it ended up making that movie good. They went out and did their own thing. They didn't need Tony Todd. They actually had his voice in it, but it wasn't a direct impact on the story. This movie doesn't have Tony Todd in it at all. And does it work? Guys, I'm a little conflicted. Not having him in this movie physically, vocally at all, is a step in a more original direction. They're not depending on him as a crutch to get more people to watch the movie. But, at this point, Tony Todd has become a staple of the franchise. He's in the first three films, and he's not in this one. I don't know, guys. I'm kind of riding the line on this one. It, it's, it's a hard line to tread. Sticking with the characters and the actors that portray these characters, while the acting isn't bad, it's something that I'm actually really conflicted about, like I said with the other thing with Tony Todd. It's sort of, well... It's kind of hard to explain. It feels like the actors in this movie and the characters that they're portraying feel like some sort of cosplay version or, you know, impersonation version of characters from the other movies. Nick, our lead, the guy that we're supposed to be behind in this film, feels like a Devin Sawa light. Like, he doesn't feel like his own character. Aside from a few of the side characters, like Nick Zano's Hunt character, yeah, I know. We just lost a really hot MILF. Hey, I can't help it. I thought the guy was funny. And of course, we got McKelty Williamson or Bubba Gump. That's right, Bubba Gump is in a Final Destination movie. Let's go! But you guys get what I mean. Aside from those characters, this cast is kind of bland in an impersonation of other characters from better films. Are they bad? No, not necessarily. Do I like them? No, not really. Normally guys, I would give you my favorite kill as I've done in all of the movies in this franchise. I'll give you my favorite kill from one, two, and three. Number four, I can't really do it because you know why? The kills are kind of lame. So, with that said, in the spirit of still giving you some kind of death uh, reaction or recount in this movie, I'll give you my worst death, and that has to go to my boy Hunt. He kind of gets like his insides sucked out through the bottom of a pole drain, and yeah, that's how one of the most charismatic characters in this movie goes. I mean, come on guys, how did they not see Nick Zano or Hunt struggling at the bottom of the pool. The pool's not very big and the dude's like 6'5". I mean, he's kind of hard to miss. Getting more into the death sequences in the movie, they're, they're just lackluster. They're not as good as the deaths that we've had before in the franchise. There really wasn't one death in this movie that had me like, let's go! Sure, the build-up to the deaths are great. Like I said, we still have the Rube Goldberg devices here with how these deaths happen. And the build-up to the deaths, as I said, are really cool. But once we get to the actual deaths, it's like, really? That's the best you got? It's so weird that this movie is actually the weakest on the opening premonition, the weakest on the kills, because it's actually directed by David R. Ellis, who directed part two. And I think maybe some of it came from James Wong not being involved in the writing room. I'm pretty sure he wrote the previous three films in this franchise, and maybe he had something to do with why those kills were so inventive. In this movie, it, they just dropped the ball. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get back to a positive. Is there any way possible for a four-act film? The third act of THE Final Destination is actually really cool. It, it's probably one of the coolest things that they've done in this franchise that's not a kill. I won't spoil it for you guys that haven't seen the fourth in this series, but it sort of acts as an alternate ending, almost. It's really cool how they do it. I didn't expect it the first time I watched this movie, and it's probably the best thing about this movie, to be honest. They really do play with the premonitions in this installment, and it's actually a really good thing for the franchise, so good on you, film. But in the end, guys, I'm going to have to give the Final Destination, or Final Destination 4, 
meh. Maybe borrow it from a friend. This sequel in the Final Destination series is just that, meh. We really didn't get that cast that you wanted to get behind. It really beat death. And you can say that that's happened in the other movies, but in this one, guys, it was really, really bad. The one character, my boy Hunt, you actually weren't supposed to like that character. That's really bad for the film. The deaths, the kill scenes, the things that make people come back to this franchise for more carnage candy. Yeah, they're really bad. And not in a sad way, they're just really, really bad. I'll give this movie credit for actually trying to come up with a new method of taking out Death's plan with the uh, multiple premonitions, but it just wasn't enough to save this movie. It's, it's just kind of forgettable. If you're gonna do a Final Destination, you know, marathon, I would easily skip this one and go to the next one. We've done it. We survived. Get it? We survived. We survived the worst sequel in the Final Destination series. We survived the Final Destination, so you know what that means. I only have one more Final Destination review to do, and that is Final Destination 5. Fun fact, the only Final Destination that I actually saw in theaters. Let me take a quick drink here. It's like I said, oh, I got a tumbler. These are really nice. They keep my drink very cold. But, as you can tell, I get a new set behind me. And as I said in my Boogeyman 3 review, it's been five months since I put out a video. And, you know, the, the YouTube life is hard. You know, you got a algorithm that you got to deal with. You got other creators that you have to try to compete with. I know it, it kind of sucks, but that's how YouTube works. So the life can get a little taxing, you know, sometimes with the YouTube life. So having a consistent um, review schedule is something that I've always wanted to do on this channel. Something that would finally get me to that 1K of having consistent high quality movie reviews, high quality content. So I wanted to come back with a change, you know, change up the set, but also honor the past of my channel in the history. So some things behind me, if you are a longtime subscriber of the Cavern of Terror channel, you'll see I have Resident Evil here, my Resident Evil Blu-ray from my Resident Evil retrospective. Friday the 13th is something that I don't really cover and I'm planning on actually reviewing the franchise eventually. We have Halloween over here, my screen pops, as you know. I've done the, uh, the entire Scream series, and I may remaster them eventually with new reviews. We have my Herschel Green Pop. Never talked about The Walking Dead, but he's my favorite character. I have I Know What You Did Last Summer, Halloween 4 and 5, H2O, Urban Legend, and Urban Legend's Final Cut, a box set on DVD that I found a long time ago. Some Resident Evil games here. I have more VHSs, my Sam and Dean Pop figures, and I actually have some movies that the guys have been in as well. I have Devour, My Bloody Valentine. Way back here that you might not be able to see is actually Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow. I'm a huge Friday fan. So guys, this set has changed. So if you like it, let me know down in the comments down below what you think. But that is it for my review of The Final Destination. Guys, I'm probably gonna take a quick break from franchise reviews for a little bit, get you guys some one-offs on the channel, really try to build up that review catalog. But if you like this video, make sure you give this video a like. And if you're new to the Cavern of Terror, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And make sure you get notifications hooked to all. That way you know about all of my uh, content that comes out because it has like three different options. And if you don't click to be notified about all of the options. They only see some of them, and then you'll think that I'm not putting out any content when I actually am. If you have suggestions for content on this channel, make sure you let me know down in the comments down below. I always respond to comments. I know there are times in the past where I haven't, but now I'm back full time and I will be commenting back on every comment. So make sure that you let me know what you want to see down in the comments down below. But most importantly, guys, until I see you in my next review, make sure that you check me out on social media. All those links are down there as well. But most importantly, guys, I am Zach. This has been the Cavern of Terror, the new set of the Cavern of Terror. But most importantly, stay metal, my friends.
It's okay. So let me. It, the, 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 the. 